I know, without any further ado, I mean, I've been talking with this guy for years. It's never, ever got boring or dull or predictable or anything. He's got hours of wonderful material. And he is, in my opinion, the finest political songwriter to come out of the US. Please welcome Mr. David Rovix. The future was coming, but now it's here. They had to fix the levees, otherwise they'd break. On one side was the city, above it was the lake. It was in the daily papers, in bold letters was the writ. What would happen when the big one hit? But every year they cut the funding just a little more so they could give it to the army to fight their oil war. National Geographic and the Times Picayune. They forecast the apocalypse, said it was coming soon. Preparations must be made, they said. Now is the time. It was years ago, they shouted. Inaction was a crime. They said the dikes must be improved and the wetlands must be saved. But Washington decided instead they should be peed. Cause malls were more important than people's lives. So put some gold dust in your eyes and hope no storm arrives. New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans. Years and years of warning, no evacuation plan. It was just if the waters rose, get out if you can. There were no buses, no one chartered any trains. There was no plan to rescue all of those who would remain. All the people with no money, all the people with no wheels, all of those who couldn't hotwire one that they could steal. Thousands and thousands of people abandoned by the state, abandoned by their country, just left to meet their fate. New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans. And the people died. Then they died some more. They drowned inside their attics, an army of the poor, an army of the destitute who couldn't get away. And the world will remember those sad and awful days when people shouted from their houses, dying on their roofs. When people came to find them, they were turned back by the troops. They died there with no water. They died there in the heat. They were shot down by the soldiers for trying to find some food to eat. New Orleans. New Orleans, New Orleans. Now the city is in ruins, a massive toxic sea scattered through the nation. Half a million refugees, here we are, in the richest country on the earth, where the color of your skin determines what your life is worth. Where oil is the king, where global warming is ignored, where the very end of life is the place we're heading towards, where it's more than just a metaphor, the flooding of the dike. And if we don't stop this madness, the whole world will be like New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans. guitar yeah. Yeah, it was I thought it was good was that good was it too loud too quiet everybody can hear um, I actually uh, got an email just a 
just a couple of weeks ago from, from a guy uh, who's going to be in London in a few days, a guy named Keith. He was working for 14 years in the business um, at the business desk at, at the Times Picayune in uh, in New Orleans, and and the, when the flood hit, he was downtown uh, for a while till they evacuated to Baton Rouge, and um, and he was <coughs> telling me about how he found that song and how when he um, he f when when the uh, he went to uh, he saw the the guy uh, who wrote for the paper who wrote the the series several years ago that was talking about what would happen if a if a big hurricane hit New Orleans head on and he, and in th in the series they had described all the you know things that would happen and um and th it was largely ignored and he was passed up for a pulitzer and um and uh and Keith was uh saying well you you should feel good about yourself now that you you know your 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 series is getting so much attention and he just started crying he said it wasn't it wasn't enough and, uh, so I thought I'd try to write more preemptive songs, you know, because I thought about writing that song years ago too, after I read his series in the Times Picayune. But um, but this song, I, I you know, I don't know if, if it'll actually prevent anything. It actually might encourage it, and uh, but you know, these things happen. But this is um, a <coughs> song predicting a certain event that may or may not happen. But I'll, if it does, I'll have the song ready for the occasion. the army when high school was through I didn't know what else to do thought I'd take care of that traveling Jones and maybe take out some student loans they sent me away to the land of the dead where I didn't know a word that they said I got shot at a lot I was nearly toast but it's the ones I killed that hurts the most most of the time I didn't know what was going on the rest of the time I knew there was something going wrong Every reason we were there turned out to be a lie I thought of that each time I saw another person die I was supposed to stay here, they sent me for four by the time I got back home, no one knew me anymore. Of the man I once was, there didn't seem to be a trace. And when I looked me in the mirror, I didn't recognize my face. I wasn't home too long before the time that I took ill. It was like the air was thick as mud, and I ached enough to kill. I didn't know I'd been fighting in a nuclear war. D.U. was in my blood, and I was knocking on death's door. I can't tell you how it felt be betrayed at every turn like the earth was spinning backwards like my heart began to burn like I had to do something while I still had the strength to stand while I still could run with a machine gun in my hand to get away with all for their ruling class but I'm not a pawn and I can't just let it be and if I'm gonna die I'm gonna take some of them fuckers with me I'll spare you the details I did what I had to do there's a boardroom blown to hell and soon I will be too you can say I lost it you can say that I'm insane but may no one ever say that my death was in vain I joined the army when high school was through I didn't know what else to do? This one I wrote about. I wrote about <coughs> half of my friends, and, uh, and it, it was. Before I, I sold out, it was um, sort of autobiographical, but. I don't drive a car because they run on gas, but if it did, it'd run on biomass. I ride a bike or sometimes a skateboard. So fuck off all you drivers and your yuppie hordes. Sitting all day in the traffic queues, I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't eat meat. I just live on moldy chives or the donuts that I found in last week's dumpster dives. Look at you people in that restaurant. I think you are so.
so sad when you could have been eating bagels like the ones that I just had. I think it is a shame all the bourgeois things you do. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't wear leather and I like my clothes in black and I made a really cool hammock from a moldy coffee sack. I like to hop on free trains. I think that is so cool. It's so much funner doing this than being stuck in school. I can't believe you're wearing those brand new shiny shoes. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't have sex and there will be no sequel because heterosexual relationships are inherently unequal. I'll just keep on moshing to anti-flag and crass until there are no differences in gender, race, or class. All you brainwashed breeders, you just haven't got a clue. I'm a better anarchist than you. I am not a pacifist, I like throwing bricks And when the cops have caught me and I've taken a few licks I always feel lucky if I get a bloody nose Because I feel so militant and everybody knows By the time the riot is all through I'm a better anarchist than you believe in voting. I think consensus is the key. I don't believe in stupid notions like representative democracy. Whether or not it works, I know it is the case that only direct action can save the human race. So when I see you in your voting booth, then I know it's true. I'm a better anarchist than you. I'm a better anarchist than you.